Welcome back, everybody. Hello, привет, ни hao, bonjour. How's everybody doing? I hope you're as happy as I am that we are in the losers bracket final of the Natalik Raid Call Pro League. We started this tournament at the beginning of March. Uh, no, at the beginning of April. And here we are, going into our final stages. VG, Netalik SG, two excellent teams that have put together some fantastic performances in this tournament for us. Some of the highlight games of the entire tournament coming from one or two of these teams. Here we are, VG, seeking to go up into the grand final against MUFC. They have one game lead, they're trying to close it out, and they're here. They're here in game two, having won an extremely convincing round one battle. Want to quickly introduce ourselves once again if you're just Five joining us. Remaining. This is Nedelik TV, the official English stream for both the West and Eastern divisions of this tournament. Other languages and alternate English streams are provided if you check out the official tournament website at nedelikraidcall.com. N E T O L I C raidcall. Dot com. Raid Call, of course, is our sponsor. You can check out that program. It's a fantastic voice over IP solution. And Raid Call Channel 2013 is the official channel to discuss these games, and they have giveaways. Prizes are being given away by our sponsor. So, should be it's definitely something that you should check out. In fact, at the end of this broadcast, we do have an announcement about something that Raid Call is sponsoring for the Grand Finals, which should be extremely exciting. I know I'm excited about it. So here we go. Up into this phase, I am, by the way, Vikramond, V-Y-K-R-O-M-O-N-D. And uh, if you're just joining us, VG took the first game. We're going to see what Nedelik SG have in store. And VG, they're going for their greed lineup. Ah, we have seen this from them before. This is something that they've deployed in the past. They've got the Lifestealer and the Dragon Knight. So this is a... Uh, <laughs> they want to have these multi-cores. It's going to be CTY playing on the DK in the middle. And ZSMJ on the Life Stealer. So one interesting thing about the return of ZSMJ to the pro scene is, of course, a lot of people said, "Oh, uh, VG are going to play an extremely Five conservative style with ZSMJ on hard carries because that's what he's famous for. That's what he's known to do: is go on those hard carries and just dominate." Of course, obviously, his Phantom Lancer performances, his Medusa performances back in you know SMM and uh, other events like that are the stuff of legends. But what I've liked from VG is that they're not just going to put ZSMJ on hard carries every time. In fact, the only hard carry we've really seen him play so far in his tenure on this team in professional games is Anti-Mage. We've mostly seen him slotting into more standard heroes in the metagame like uh, Juggernaut, Radiant Lifestealer, and even on uh, Chaos Knight. So maybe not what people expected of the return of ZSMJ, but he's slotted in. I actually like this because it's not just him being sort of a, a relic of the past. It's him adapting to what is currently useful and making his mark. VG, the other interesting thing is they don't just spend all their time trying to guarantee farm for ZSMJ. FY and Fenrir are much more about creating space on the map, controlling it, generating kills, and allowing ZSMJ to farm that way, rather than just hyper for protect one style. I like that. It's more dynamic, and in fact, VG are a quite aggressive team. Uh, and that's a very good dynamic for them to go for. I would be shocked. I really... They do have the Magnus, so... Nedlik SG, they're not going for the Queen of Pain this time. They focus so heavily, so frequently on Chibi X33's Queen of Pain that a lot of teams just respect ban that Quap against them, or he just dominates. But interestingly, despite the 13-2-2 performance that he put together in the previous game, and uh, two assists might not sound like a lot, but keep in mind there wasn't much to assist. That was 16 kills that Nedlik SG got last game, and Chibi X got 13 of them and assisted two of them. So this game, even with the Queen of Pain performance, they go for the Magnus, and I find that very, very interesting. Also, these silencer bands, I'm not totally remaining. clear on, but maybe they know something I don't. Maybe they've seen VG's uh, scrimmages or pubs remaining. where maybe they've been sort of experimenting with a uh, strong silencer presence, because 
We had a first band silencer in the last game, and I was like, oh, they're clearly just leaving more heroes in the pool. But this time we see the silencer banned again, and this teams aren't really banning this hero that often right now. So this is very interesting. I'll have to maybe uh, ask them about it later or pick their brains about this decision. But here's the Magnus. So maybe they thought that even though Chibi managed to be in every fight and get so many kills, they still need more disable. They still need to do more. The other nice thing about the Magnus is he's better against Lifestealer. Queen of Pain really is not going to be able to do much against Lifestealer at all. I already commented in the last game that Queen of Pain has a lot of difficulty actually killing Anti-Mage because of his spell resistance. Forget spell resistance. Lifestealer has out and out spell immunity for 6 seconds out of every 15, and so it becomes difficult for Queen of Pain. Magnus, on the other hand, this disable that goes through, through BKB is very, very big. The ability to sort of just lock down Life Stealer is going to be substantial, and that's why they picked this up for Chibi this game. Meanwhile, an early pickup of the Weaver, it's usually been Rave Plu on this hero, so it'll be interesting if they draft another Ken hero on top of this. And then the Visage, I can't let this go without comment. This is Netflix SG saying, we want to win the Triver's Try, because that's really what Visage specializes in. Uh, more so even than, Undying is more about sort of gumming up the works and sort of uh, just winning those long extended 3v3 team fights. Visage is was just about blowing people up. And we've seen actually Weaver Visage trialing combos before because Weaver is able to do quite a decent amount of damage to a single target at a time. And then if you pair that with the soul assumption from Visage, you could just you can blow people up, no problem. You can just kill them very, very easily. Now Life Stealer. Uh, if the things don't land on him, of course. Remember. Weaver is a good hero against Life Stealer, by the way. This is sort of um this response of Five Magnus Weaver to Lifestealer is fairly inspired because Weaver, strong against Lifestealer, Magnus, a reasonable option against Lifestealer. I would consider, if I were an LGSG, getting even more anti-Lifestealer tech. Of course, the Shadow Demon taken out first phase by Vici Gaming. So you can see they were prepping to put the Lifestealer out by taking out one of the common responses to him. Bane is still available, although the issue with Bane here would be he doesn't bring quite as much damage, and he's extremely mana intensive. So their trialing would have a little bit more difficulty getting those because Undying! <gasps> I did mention the Undying. I was like, you take the visit for the Triver's Try, and the other hero you take for the Triver's Try is Undying. So Vici Gaming's uh, main plan right now, in my opinion, has to be to try to avoid the Triver's Try if at all possible. If you think that Nedalek SG are going to go in the hard lane with their try, go the safe, go the uh, hard lane with your try. If you think they're going to go in their safe lane, go into your hard lane. Sorry, go into your safe lane. Avoid that 3 versus 3 matchup. Remaining. Nope, they have the Rubik, this critical setup stun for the Lashrak or Lina Five that uh, Fenrir would bring to the table, but they don't have either of them because Nedalek SG actually banned Seven. both of those heroes out. So, what will Vici Gaming pick up for their number 5, or their number 4 if Rubik is the 5? What will they take for their second support? And will this trialing be able to survive against this extremely uh, mini teamfight oriented lineup that Nedalek SG are bringing to the table? I think this is actually probably going to be a solo hero. So, uh, it's not going to be Weaver solo. I think it's going to be Weaver in the try, and then a solo in here. They take the Venge, and this is... Huh. I'm not sure about this Venge pick. If they dodge, if they successfully pick the right lane that Nedalek SG aren't in, I think the Venge could be fine. Because the uh, percent damage aura, useful for the fact that they have two carry heroes essentially, the Dragon Knight and Lifestealer will both benefit from this percentage damage, but Ventral Spirit is extremely level dependent as far as supports go. She's more like a sort of Dazzle or Omni Knight or one of those supports that Ten really seconds. wants to actually get her levels up. And if they end up in a difficult Five Triver's Try scenario mm -hmm. where they always need to stick together and defend, I think they're going to have trouble finding levels for this Venge. I, I, I'm not sure about this pickup. The swap will be useful. Uh, Ten seconds remaining. I don't know. It gives them initiation power, but they already have initiation power from the clockwork. And PL... PL coming out from Nedalek SG, so one of the ZSMJ heroes thrown back in his face, and we actually haven't seen PL in a while. Uh, this is our first time seeing Phantom Lancer in this tournament in several rounds, but here we go. Nedalek SG with the extremely aggressive lineup paired up with a PL. So their idea is, hey, we are going to put these heroes up in your face, kill you, and PL is just going to wild up. Chibi's on the PL, huh? Ken on the Magnus. I wonder if this is going to be a Magnus-based tri-lane. So Magnus-based tri-lanes are interesting because, of course, Shockwave able to deal a very respectable amount of damage. The flip side is, if you can't get levels for your Magnus, the Magnus pickup doesn't end up being useful at all. 
This is very, very interesting. I am not sure. They definitely took a chance with this lineup, and they're going to take a chance with these lanes as well. Let's introduce the teams. Nedelik SG with this lineup that's very strong, but the lane and role choices are flummoxing me a little bit. Ken, their number one player from the last game on the Gyrocopter, he's on the Magnus now. And then we have Lodraki and KS as the tri lane supports on the Visage and Undying. Maximum 3 vs 3 potential. Then Rave Blue goes up on the Weaver. Chibi X33, their queen of their their famous Queen of Pain mid player, who's really been making a name for himself, he goes on the Phantom Lancer, and I'm I'm very interested in this. I'm interested in this choice. Ken in the mid. It's gonna no, it's Magnus mid, I guess. I don't know. I really don't know, folks. All right, VG ZSMJ number one. He's going up on the Life Stealer. We'll see if he gets the same sort of insane farm that he did on the Anti Mage last game with this Life Stealer. Life Stealer, of course, a, a way worse Flash Farmer. Invisroot is here. Fy Rubik Fenrir on this greedy level, greedy Vengeful Spear. We'll see if he finds the levels. Cty goes up on the Dragon Knight in the mid. This is what we expected. And XTT, he will go up on the solo lane as the clockwork. Already copying some damage here. GBX is going to throw out the Spirit Lens. Cogs actually traps Lodraki in. He's out. XTT is okay for now, but another Decay would actually do a lot. Will they? I think they have the first blood here. No, they don't actually. No pursuit from... Interesting. No pursuit from Chibi X, but another decay. Another couple decays, and I think XTT's gone. They need to they need to pick off his retreat. Chibi X, if he comes in and just spirit lances again, oh, he doesn't have the mana. He won't have the mana. XTT is going to be fine. He's okay. He's completely fine. All right. XTT, he makes it out of a potentially dangerous situation, but it seems like Netflix SG are not going to go for the three v three. Huh. This is an interesting choice for them. I really thought that they'd be going for this 3v3 to pressure this lane from VG. I hope they don't end up paying for this because, in my opinion, it's a, it's a tactical error. Uh, not because they need to go 3 vs 3, I don't think they do, but because they didn't even go... What I would have liked to see if they wanted to do the 3 vs 1 lane against XTT, like, okay, you want to do the 3 vs 1 lane? Then what I would say you need to do is ward up aggressively in this jungle and make sure that VG can't control this jungle. If they can get good jungle stacks and clear them out with these supports, then all of a sudden Fenrir has no trouble finding levels. All of a sudden FY has a pretty quick spell steal. And then I just don't think you have as much of an advantage as you otherwise would. I, I don't know. Oh, Rave Plu! Does he? Yes! He gets the courier! He gets the courier! Oh no! Actually, the bottle is on. Uh, no, CTY doesn't have bottle! Oh, that's going to be a huge advantage. Nice courier snipe here by Rave Blue. He doesn't quite go to the lane just yet. He actually picks off the courier, and that's a critical snipe for Nedelic SG. That actually is going to give Ken a substantial advantage over CTY in the mid. So even with this questionable decision-making for this try versus try, this is, oh man, no joke, not fucking around from Nedelic SG here. Rave Blue, I don't know where he's actually going to now, of course. The question is, what does Weaver do next? He's secured 175 gold for everybody on his team. He's secured the ability to kill that courier and no bottle core for the mid. But where does Weaver fit in? I feel like a tri lane. Still, I still feel like they could put PL solo. Jungle Weaver? I... Hmm. These are professional players. They're very smart. They're good at what they do. I just feel like the Jungle Weaver is going to be so slow. He's got level 2, so that's Geminate. And I understand him not coming to the solo lane. It would be dangerous. They could sentry ward him out. But why not give XTT a couple levels, but also guarantee farm for Chibi? I don't know. I don't know. I, I worry about Rave Plu. I I'm glad he got the courier snipe. I think it's a big deal. But I'm not 100% certain about this jungle. I, I think that this is going to be a very slow Weaver development. And they have not been able to shut down XTT. XCT is at level 3 already on this clockwork. He's already a level ahead of the Weaver. I feel like if they had just put the, the aggressive try, maybe they could have uh, pressured ZSMJ a bit here. Let's note ZSMJ, I mean, this is just, I feel like familiarity. Chibi X is fundamentally a solo mid player, and I'm sure he's played the carry role, but he's not their, their fundamentally their carry player. And so you see him only with 16 last hits, 23 for ZSMJ. This PL's getting a little bit out of farm. Now, it's not tremendously important for their PL to out farm Life Stealer just yet. It's sort of just a late game time bomb. But I just feel like after Denied. drafting such an aggressive lineup that could team fight, now like SJ haven't really used it. Plus, there are potentially issues with the Weaver. We have Rave Plue up in the solo lane now. This is what I'm going to be keeping an eye on, folks. I'm going to see if the Weaver actually manages to survive this lane. 
And if he does, good. If he doesn't, problematic. CTY, meanwhile, even with no courier, he's done very well for himself. He is 23 last hits, actually more than Ken. And again, this rotation, this Ken to the mid, CTY to the top. And I think this has decreased the effectiveness of both of these guys. Ken is actually, he's actually behind an XP relative to Chibi. So if you look at the XP graph, VG are heading towards 1k ahead on the experience because the slow development on Weaver, uh, XTT is finding his levels. Very smart clockwork play. This will be his level 4. And Weaver gets nothing. Rave Blue still at level 2. And Ken's even losing mid a little bit, honestly. I, I'm i concerned. I'm concerned for Daedalic SG. I, I want there to be a game 3, obviously. I want them to put together a good performance here. I just feel like their role in lane assignments were maybe not optimal. Maybe people in Twitch chat can sort of... Uh, it's something I want you guys to discuss. I'll be very interested to see your input. I do watch Twitch chat even while... The game is going on, so... What do you think about these lane assignments for VG? Uh, sorry, for Nedelik SG. Do you think that they're the most effective that they could have put out? I would bounce this off my co-caster, but he overslept again. So, uh, you guys are my co-casters this time. Thank you, in, in advance. So let's take a look at the overall level graph. We've got level 2 Fenrir. But, I mean, the Ven, she is a pretty level-hungry support. But Weaver's not even a support. He's a level-hungry dude in general. You want this Weaver to find his levels. You want him to be able to get developed. And right now, they're not developing him. He hits level 3 now. We've got level 3 for Lodraki. We've got level 4 for KS. So here's the good news for an SG. These supports are finding quite a bit of decent levels. Level 2 Tombstone for Lodraki and level 1 Decay. He's probably going to pick up Soul Rip level 4. KS, he's got this level 2 Soul Assumption and this level 2 Grave Chill. And uh, that's pretty good. They've got level 5 on Chibi. The nice thing for VG, CTY has his ultimate. Ken has his ultimate. So two of both ultimates on both sides there. ZSMJ, he's level 6, moving through it. He's got Phase Boots, 1150. Looks like he'll probably just go Armlet after that. Maybe Drums. Sometimes Life Studios go Drums before Armlet. Sometimes they go Armlet before Drums. And, uh, let's take a look at Chibi. He has his Tranquil Boots, 1300. Most likely going to be Drums into Diffusal Blade. That's the typical build these days. They actually used a Fortify on their tower here, but VG... They actually peel off this creep wave, so uh, Fenrir not going early Vengeance Aura. I actually like this, I think the stun is quite good, ranking it up. Even though it doesn't stun for that much longer, it is longer and it's got good damage. They're going to do a decent amount of damage to this tower, in fact, I think they could bring it down because their next creep wave is incoming. If Nedalic SG want to save this tower, they need to rotate people over. Meanwhile, XCT, I think they first blood. Yes, all right. I caught it just before it ended. I was watching the tower, but they do pop down the, the tombstone. They dive way under the tower, and they get that. I guess they just want to trade towers, because their tower here does fall. Rave Blue, he's finding a bit of XP just by hiding out here. They don't have sentries secured up here yet. Meanwhile, uh, Chibi actually quite a bit of damage here. He's probably going to have to either, either salve or pop off the Tranquil Boots. But they might get the tower trade. I don't think they will, actually. We do have the rotation. Here's KS. They're going to chase? Really? Rave Blue is in. Fenrir, oh no, this could be drawn for the Weaver. Ken, decent RP, but not quite enough. ZSMJ already with a kill. The Shockwave comes out. One for one so far, but losing Rape Blue again. ZSMJ actually, can they kill him? No, it's a one for one trade. Weaver for Vengeful Spirit. In my opinion, not the greatest of trades for Nedalik, but they have rotated their players over, and sooner or later they had to do this. Sooner or later they had to actually come in here. So I like this. I think they should keep these people here. Uh, get Rape Blue some guaranteed XP. Start to peel this lane back. Good sentry ward from VG here. This was very smart. Immediately killing Rave Blue when he sort of went in to try to make something happen. If only that had been an RP on 3 from Ken, it would have been hard to land. But the RP on 3 would have been absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, he only finds the RP on 2 players. So, uh, ZSMJ remains free and he actually finds a kill. Chibi, oh! <sighs> if he had just walked up a second earlier, he could have gotten that catapult last hit. I... It's tough. It's a tough situation. They're under a ton of pressure. They are facing elimination from this tournament. CTY picks up the middle. You might criticize CTY for not getting the last hit on that tower, but actually it's more gold to the team as a whole if the Dragon Knight doesn't pick up the last hit. So it's more gold to the Lifestealer, for instance. And good development. I mean, you can see that ZSMJ is almost 500 gold per minute. More than 400 for CTY, and far less for these two core heroes of Netflix SG, the Phantom Lancer and the Magnus. Meanwhile, in the mid, CTY, he uh, pops off his ultimate form again, and Nedlik SG can't decide if they want to go in on this. Unfortunately, it's... Oh, Rape Blue! He's popped out again! There's the open wounds after his Shukachi! And there we go! Another kill for ZSMJ, and this bottom lane's going quite badly. He had his drums first, so it was drums delivery before he actually got the armlet. It's going to be armlet next, though. The drums very good. It makes him move fast. 
This is the race car lifestealer approach that we see in Asia. It's an Asian... Uh, it originally was the FNC build. Actually, Trouble for XTT top. I think they've got him here. There's the Grave Chill. A little bit more damage. And I think Chibi's going to pick up the last hit on this. Actually, Ken dies in the middle. I was just watching the clockwork. Unfortunately, I can't have my camera in two places at the same time. But another trade. And I feel like VG are, are looking a little better, even though they're... Tied on kills, if you look at gold, substantial advantage. More farm for ZSMJ, two towers to zero, and look at this control. Look at these wards that they have. They're going to spot Rafe Blue out. I would almost expect to see Rafe Blue switch lanes. And Chibi, he actually made Soul Ring. This is an attempt to get more Spirit Lances out to harass XTT. But the thing is that XTT no longer needs to be in this lane full time. He's got his hook shot. In my opinion, he could start rotating soon. Oh man, KS just getting harassed heavily. CTY actually using this ultimate in a non-traditional fashion. Just to harass the hell out of them and annoy them. Lodraki, I mean, this Undying should be useful. Wow, the Tombstone completely wasted. They just do not catch CTY at all. Ken needs Blink Dagger, is what he needs. And he doesn't have it. He only has 100. Oh, Ray Blue. He is completely locked down. This Weaver drops incredibly quickly. And there we go, another kill for VG, shutting down Weaver. If you look at the levels, Weaver tied for the lowest along with the Dire Supports and Fenrir. Now look at you, they're having trouble, and Ken just finished his Arcane Boots. Nowhere near the Blink Dagger that he would need. Now Undying, VG have a lineup with three Strength Heroes. Undying steals all of their damage and HP. That's really good. The issue is that they're still not finding favorite choice. Wow, XTT, very bold there, go, trying to go in on ShibiX. I think if he had started landing battery assaults, he would have tried to cog and get the kill. Doesn't quite happen, ShibiX playing just safely enough. And there's his drums, but look how behind this drums is relative to Lifestealer. And this speaks to the, um, this speaks to the Soul Ring a little bit. That was 900 gold that Chibi had to pay with a lower amount of gold incoming than ZSMJ. That ZSMJ isn't gonna care about. You see the Helm of Iron Will built up for that armlet, and meanwhile, CTY, this is this, definitely the build he likes to go on Dragonite, is this Shadow Blade. It gives him initiation power. Ever since Dragonite's stun got changed to be ranged in uh, his dragon form rather than melee, which it was before, it's melee in human form, but it's ranged in dragon form. And so uh, the ranged stun lets you actually have great initiation power with Shadow Blade. Because with Phase Boots, Shadow Blade, Elder Dragon form, you actually go. Well, uh, sorry, I, I know Phase Boots and Shadow Blade don't stack, but. Uh, you actually go really, really fast. They're going to try XTT, but I don't think they can get them. Yeah, the familiars are here, but no stuns. One rotation. The SMJ actually coming top. Very interesting choice. We'll have to keep an eye on what happens there. So, when your DK can initiate with this long duration stun, it actually uh, sort of lets you get in. If first they can stun Ken and deal a lot of damage to him, really put him out of his comfort zone. As you can see, this Magnus, this mid lane is not that safe to farm. Uh, the tier 1 is gone. He only has 42 last hits. He needs about 1,500 gold to make his BKB. Chibi-X, he actually is dusted up. Fenrir with the stun. They're going to get this Phantom Lancer. Yes, it's another kill for ZSMJ. 3-0-1. Oh, he is about, uh, what's he missing? Gloves of Haste. 100 gold, so two last hits off from that armlet, and he's going to get it. And he's now substantially ahead of Phantom Lancer, especially now that they secured that kill. They pick it up. KS, still in the mid here. Ken, copying a lot of damage as well, and you can just see how far back Lodraki is sitting. And VG, pressuring the top tier 1 tower. I don't know how what kind of defense they can put up here. Rave Blue, just sort of trying to survive. The Sentry Ward's still here, so he's still spotted out. He has his time lapse, so that gives him a bit of survivability. Building up towards his power treads here. Actually, the familiar is in here, just trying to get stuns. I think this is a little questionable. They do get the stun. Oh, they missed the stun on ZSMJ, so ShibiX comes back in. Gonna be fairly safe. The tower is, of course, still alive, so he's still okay as long as the tower is here. Lodraki and KS can come to help out. But you can just see VG earning a substantial advantage, controlling the map, getting the vision, getting the sentry wards in particular to spot out any, any shenanigans that Netlik SG might try to attempt. And their two primary heroes farming very well. You can see still about 500 gold per minute for ZSMJ. In fact, these GPMs haven't really changed. And as long as GPM isn't changing, that's the difference in gold every minute. That's 70, that's about 150 additional gold at ZSMJ. Nice familiar stuns. The Spirit Lens, but can they make anything happen here? I don't think they can. Defensive Cogs from XTT, and their tier 1 tower, keep in mind, it's still here. So they can retreat back towards it anytime they want. Actually, we saw a rotation over from Rave Blue. They counter ward the Sentry Ward here, so Rave Blue won't be spotted out unless a new thing comes out. Wow! How did they kill? Why was Ken there? He was trying to do a clever flanking tactic, and unfortunately, VG completely spot him out. And just trying to secure the tier 1 tower here for Nidalek SG. Meanwhile, Fi, FY, he's just finding levels. 
<laughs> He's not joining this fight until he absolutely possibly has it. Here he goes. Here he goes. We have the stun from Vengeful Spirit. Nedlick actually trying to die. Fenrir will probably take a fall. But lots of damage getting thrown on KS as well. XTT trying to chase the breath comes out from CTY. Low Dragon takes another damage. It's the damage over time with the Dragonite. XTT still alive. ZSMJ chasing as well. It looks like Low Dragon. Yes, he will die. Nice Dragonite stun. GBX not able to escape. And that's unfortunate. It's a triple kill for CTY. The tombstone's down. They got the tier one tower. But they paid for it with Phantom Lancer, with Undying, with Visage. And so this. A uh, 4v4 fight turned into a 4v5 fight. I feel like they needed Magnus. They needed Magnus to be able to get a big RP off. And he wasn't in the fight. And CTY, he picks up the triple. Up to 1,500 gold. 5-0-0 for this Dragon Knight. And he's going to pressure this tier 2 tower. He may even try to get second Zs on Ken. No. Just going to deal damage. You can just see the Dragon Corrosive Breath and his auto attack damage. About 130. He's just taking away this tower. They may try to chase. Here comes the Familiar. Will it stun? This Grave Chill is there. FY comes. He's got the Shukuchi still. Uh, he actually gets stunned by the Familiar. But it doesn't matter. CTY. Picking away at this tower. His ultimate will expire. ZSMJ pressuring this tower a little bit. I think while they try to fight here, ZSMJ is just going to pick up the tower kill. Here we go. Yes, they get the tower kill. VG continuing to just give Nedalic SG too much to think about. They're really pressuring them on multiple fronts. Nedalic SG trying to chase, but what is their chasing ability? XTT just, again, he responds to the lance with the defensive cogs. They split up. CTY heads northwest. Oh, he could turn this around. He's in the Shadow Blade. He's still in the Shadow Blade. Will he get the stun? No, he doesn't get the stun. And Chibi Jumpa walks off. Interesting. Building towards that Shadow Blade, or at least the Yasha. We'll have to see if he actually goes. Sorry, not the Shadow Blade. I meant the Diffusal Blade. Will he go Diffusal Blade or Yasha? I'm actually not totally clear. Diffusal is the Phantom Lancer item, but he may feel like he needs uh, the movement speed earlier from Yasha. But I suspect still Diffusal. I would be. Yeah, it's going to most likely be Diffusal. Uh, if Rave Blue. Just the bracer for tank ability. Still can't even find his power treads. Tough situation. CTY. There we go. There's the initiation. The infest pops out. They've dusted Chibi up. It doesn't even matter if he double walks and he doesn't get the chance as they finish him off with the dragon breath. CTY improves to 5 0 1. Another kill for ZSMJ. Neither of these guys have died. The two core heroes of VG really putting together an impressive performance. It's actually way less about the supports this time. This time, it's about these star players. It's about CTY, the X carry. Now, the mid. Nice hook shot from XT. Low Draki probably going down here. Just a little bit more damage is needed. Dragon Knight. The This is such a strong ability. Breathe fire. The AoE damage just spits out on Undying. Taking him down. 11-4 VG. They're looking commanding. They're looking like a different team from the team that fell 2-1 to Nedalic SG in the, for the previous winner's bracket match that these two teams faced. And ZSMJ just going a little bit beyond the tower. Pressuring down these creeps while they take the tower here. This Dragonite Corrosive Breath again. It just clears out these towers so quickly. Fenrir has found a few levels. He's got the full rank magic missile. And he's going to start putting points in Vengeance Aura. Just to give that extra bit of damage to CTY and ZSMJ. The Life Stealer. That all started actually the stun going out in the PL Illusion. Not quite what they wanted there. But this Shadow Blade and drums. Actually double drums. Interesting that they went for this. ZSMJ and CTY. CTY were apart enough that they decided that two drums, because of the stats efficiency and the fact that they weren't always together, would be useful. And honestly, it gives them a lot of movement speed. Just look at how fast this Dragon Knight is, even in human form. He goes at 483. He doesn't even need the Dragon form to go close to max movement speed. ZSMJ goes for the Yasha. Here it is, race car life stealer. He's going to finish this out into a Sanjin Yasha and this life stealer. He's so fast. Their entire team is so fast. They almost don't care about the Visage Grave Chill. Here's Fi. He's got the Shukuchi. One more Shukuchi and he'll be able to initiate. Ken, he pops the Invisibility Rune. He knows what kind of danger he's in. This Magnus has not been able to contribute. He only needs 70 more gold for the Blink. A big RP could still turn things around. And Netlik SG could still make something happen. But they need that Blink Dagger. They need the ability to get in because otherwise they're going to get chased down and uh, blown off the face of the Earth. They're on, their, they're on the ropes here, folks. There's no current sort of damage going out, but nonetheless, Nedalic SG are on the ropes. Look at the net worth. Look at the fact that ZSMJ has almost double the item equity that Phantom Lancer does, that Chibi does. Chibi just, he's just trying to build towards that. He's got 98 last hits. It's not bad, but it's not tremendously good either. ZSMJ, oh man, Lodrak, he's lifted up by FY. He will not TP out. He's forced to leave. The Sun dying. They took him as a teamfight specialist, and he's just been dying too fast in teamfights. He has no items. He only has boots, magic wand, and sentry ward. Can you say soy sauce? Because that's basically what he is. Dragon Knight picks off the tier 2 mid, and they're going to get that tier 2 bot as well. Last time on ZSMJ, you don't see them going these 
non-greedy, I don't want the last hit, I'll give it to my team. Both of them absolutely securing the last hits at this point. Dragon Net improving to 10,000 net worth, 4,000 ahead of where Chibi is. I mean, VG are just controlling everything. Everything is going their way. FY, just going to actually finish off his four staff there, chasing Chibi. A solo Rubik chasing a Phantom Lancer? Are you kidding me? To use an idiom from another caster. We're Sean, folks. Obviously, you can see it. I don't think you need my commentary too much. Not much to say, really. An easy Roshan for VG. Aegis for CTY, not for Lifestealer. Lifestealer at this point a little more survivable because of the, the you know, the Lifesteal. Armlet! Ha <laughs> ha! Load of Indicated. People criticize, uh... <laughs> I guess actually Loda and CTY have somewhat similar approaches to the game. Uh, a lot of people criticize Armlet Dragonite, and here we see it on actually on CTY, and he's been playing Dragonite. Oh no! This completely stacked Ancient Camp for Nedalic SG will get completely mopped up. Oh, not Ancient Camp, sorry, Neutral Camp. They've actually got another stack Neutrals here. They use the Infest, CTY, and ZSMJ just, they're farming everything. Hide your neutrals. Hide your lane creeps. They're farming everybody out here. Armlet for his Dragonite. So this gives him tankiness, attack speed, it increases the push. Vanguard once again for XTT. He really likes this Vanguard as the first major item on Clockwork. Not something most people- Oh, Wraith Blue. Will he get hooked? The stun from CTY. They're going to hookshot. That'll kill him. The hookshot kills him. And Weaver. He was so close to high ground and still not safe. He's got nothing. Here we go. The high ground incoming. Do they have ultimate? They have the Dragonite ultimate if they want it. Ken, he's got his Blink Dagger. Could he make something happen here? That's the question. Fire Dragon picked up for CTY just before they push. Interesting. He just wants the AoE for the impending team fight, And a team fight it has to be. That's what Nedalic SG needs here. The Decay gets thrown out. ZSMJ willing to go on the tower. He doesn't have the Aegis, but it is on CTY. Ken, he's still trying to find the opportunity. He's trying to find his moment, but VG are so spread out. The low ground for FY and Fenrir. This is such clever positioning. CTY is just sieging them solo. He's like a spirit bear right now, just putting the siege together. Meanwhile, the split push. Chibiex, he's actually finished his defusal. That's a big deal. The fact that he will have defusal for this potential fight is a huge deal, and he gets the tower. Nice play from him, very smart, but VG, the siege continues. Still a little time on this Dragon Knight, about 15 seconds. He wants to do as much damage as possible, but he doesn't have the damage over time anymore. This is actually the lack of corrosive breath speaking here. He's not doing as much damage to this Rax as he could be. The Grave Chill comes out. They're just trying to slow them down. They're just trying to delay it. Chibi's here. He's got his defusal. He gets stunned. The Dragon Breath, they return. The RP goes out just on one. Ray Blue forced a time lapse. Actually, Ken already on the ground. And they're just continuing. The Tombstone is down. Lots of zombies being spawned. This is actually gumming up the works a lot. VG may have to retreat. This might be a turn right here. Swap from Fenrir. He wants to turn this around. Infest deals a lot of damage. ZSMJ already gets a kill. GBX, he's stunned by CTY. The kills will come out. Wicked Six Street for CTY. And they take down everything. Four players on the ground. It's just too much damage. The double armlet. The infest damage. The turnaround. Fenrir with the really smart swap. I actually thought VG would have to run, but no. They swap in. They get the massive infest AoE. The dragon's breath AoE. And Chibi, he's just not tanky enough, and they don't have this Undying surviving long enough with no items. He just can't survive, and VG, 2-0. After losing 2-1 to the same team, to Nedalic SG, who were then called April Fool's Day, then Despicable Me Too, now finally finding a sponsor, they performed ably. But VG, I have to say, in the course of this tournament, they have teared up as a team. They are a higher class outfit right now than they were. They are simply a higher breed of team than they were when they began this tournament. I am incredibly impressed by their performance. Uh, honestly, just the, like I said, the complete package. The first game... <laughs> Soul Booster? <laughs> Interesting build coming out from CTY, definitely. I like it, actually, and I like the armlet. People might think I was criticizing the armlet. I wasn't. I was more amused by the fact that this is a build that's so criticized so often. VG, the first game... All about the supports, in my opinion. ZSMJ was the highlight, but the supports were the MVPs. FY and Fenrir controlled that game. This game, it was all cores. Fantastic play from ZSMJ and CTY. Neither of them die. They they put all the pressure on. They secure a ton. Even a brilliant rotation from ZSMJ uh, onto Chibi X33, securing their carry advantage early on. And then like SG just find themselves overwhelmed by this extremely strong performance from VG. Thank you guys so much for watching today's today's broadcast. This will be the end of our broadcast for now. We will be returning in about uh, 10 and a half hours. So at a uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. 
So that's uh, 1 a.m., 100 hours for uh, Central European summertime, and uh, 0700 hours for Singapore time, Hong Kong time. That will be the Losers Bracket Finals in the West Division. So this is a, a bipartite tournament. We've got both the East Division and the West Division. West Division is different teams, obviously. It's uh, North American teams, South American teams, uh, and European teams, although the European teams got eliminated. So that will be Arctic Gaming, the Peruvian team, who's trying to angle for a spot in the TI3 qualifiers, and, I believe, Root Gaming. So that's who we're going to see later today. The Grand Finals of the East Division, which I'm sure is what you all wanted to hear about. The Grand Finals are in one week from today. May 5th. Uh, day is subject to change, but it's probably May 5th. Best of five series. One game advantage for the winner's bracket finalists. Who? Let me remind you. MUFC. Fantastic team. They've been performing extremely well across all tournaments. You can watch them in GEST right now. MUFC against VG. Two of the best teams that entered the tournament will go up in the grand finals. VG starting with a one-game disadvantage, but if they play like they did today, maybe that one-game disadvantage won't matter. Thank you guys for watching. Dota TV, really appreciate that you guys picked up a tournament ticket. Anybody that hasn't can still pick one up for $4 in the Dota store. You can sort of find that uh, there, and you can see all the VODs plus the upcoming games. Anybody watching on Twitch TV, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you guys coming to check out the stream. This is, of course, Netalik TV, your official English coverage for both the West and East divisions. If, you're, if you did watch another stream, you're not hearing me, but I appreciate you anyway. My name is Vikramond, V-Y-K-R-O-M-O-N-D. Uh, you can find me on my website, vikramond.com, or on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, whatever you sort of want. If you Google my name, you'll find me. I will be casting uh, later today for the Premier League playoffs, so check that out at Twitch TV slash the Premier League. The sponsor of this tournament was Raid Call. Uh, they give away prizes in Raid Call Channel 2013. Yes, the announcement. Important announcement. In the Grand Finals, Raid Call will be checking out. Our sponsors will see how many people are in Raid Call Channel 2013. If we have 4,000 viewers in Raid Call, so not just on the streams, in the Raid Call program in Channel 2013 for the Grand Finals, my understanding is that the sponsors, so Netflix TV and their sponsors, will be giving away an all-expenses-paid trip to the International 3. So if you're a fan, if you're maybe international, you know, you don't live in the U.S., or even if you do live in the U.S., it actually doesn't matter. All of your expenses will be paid. They'll pay for the ticket, hotel accommodations, airfare. You will have, it's, it's, they call it the dream package. You will be going to TI3 for free. And you'll get to hang out with, you know, the teams, whoever the heck you want. So we could see VG or MUFC, our finalists there. And if you do, you'll probably see them there. I personally was at TI2. Uh, it was a fantastic experience. I will be at TI3 this year. So, you know, if for some ungodly reason you want to meet me, you'll see me there as well. But yeah, 4,000 people in Raid Call Channel 2013 for the Grand Finals in a week. We'll give uh, a giveaway to uh, one lucky player or one lucky viewer to uh, go to TI3. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, wanted to make sure I got that announcement in. Thank you guys for watching. I am done for now. I'm gonna take a break before my next cast. Uh, there's lots of stuff that you guys can watch. I will be rebroadcasting these later, but frankly guys, don't watch the rebroadcasts. Watch some of this live Dota that we're gonna see. GEST going on, MUFC versus First Departure, two fantastic teams. MUFC, one of our grand finalists, watch that. Watch the Premier League later today. It's going to be fantastic games. Uh, if you're familiar with the Western scene at all, Team Liquid versus Virtus Pro should be a fantastic game. The winner of that against Alliance in the grand finals should be just as great. Netflix TV later today will have the Western Finals. It's going to be a day of Dota, folks. I will be there with you. Hope to see you there. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.